Welcome to The Shooting Show. This week we follow pigeon guru Jeff Garrard tackling the woodies down in Essex. Plus we bring you a special news report from the Northern Shooting Show. You want to hit him Pigeon shooting legend Jeff Garrard is out once again, treating us to a shoot with a difference. Usually it's just Jeff and his dog behind the hide, but today we've got no fewer than four guns going at it. Right, what we're up to today, uh, we just joined Pete, Will and Justin, and we're after pigeons on some peas that Pete has drilled. Uh, we've got two fields, we've got Top Bowen and Town Allotment, and Will and Justin are going to go on one field and me and yeah, Pete are going to go on the other. And the old yeah. young yeah. lads don't think that's so fair yeah. now that I put them in their places and tell them where to go. So they've decided that um, we'll toss a coin. So we'll toss a coin and whoever calls right will get the get the pick of the place. Um, that's the, that's the, that is the fairest way that we can do it. So that's what we'll do. Uh, tails. Tails. Tails it is. Oh, you get first choice. Top bones. Top bones. Yeah, I reckon. Right. What we've got, uh, we've got two fields of drilled peas that have been in the ground now for about three or four days. And we've been watching the pigeons build up. Um, like I say, Justin um, actually works with Pete now and Will. And so Pete and Will are going to be going on, uh, Justin and Will will be going on to one field and me and Pete will be going on the other one. Hopefully the idea being is as there's two fields of it that we can keep them on the go for each other so we'll, we'll both get a reasonable day out of it. Good luck boys. Will won the toss and they've elected to go on to Top Bowens which has left me and Pete town allotment. We'll have a little look on the way when we, you know, when we get up there to have a look see where the best place to put a hide up and uh, we'll just take it from there. Well, when we pulled up at the bottom of the field, uh, got my glasses out, had a good look because you know it was a fairly like the field goes up a fair way, and it was quite encouraging. Um, there was a few pigeons along the bottom, there was a few pigeons along the side of the field, but there was quite a few at the top. They'll start coming out of Franco's wood there as well. Yeah, there's another group coming onto it now. Look. Yeah. You know, all in all, I've probably two or three hundred pigeons on the field, which was which was nice to see. But also, there was a bit of a you know bit of movement coming on and off the field. I'll tell you what I like to see. What I'm like seeing is like these big group. Well, not big groups, but these these little groups coming high, and they're just coming out. They just yeah. The pigeons got up. We put the pigeons up and moved them off, and. We just sat there for a little while and got an idea of where we wanted to go. Um, but with with past history of this field, having shot it before, um, you know, I had a bit of an idea where the flight lines are on here. But just watched it for 10 minutes just to confirm that we'll be going top of the hill, top hedge. There's a real nice thick piece of ivy up there that we can get a nice hide round it good back uh, drop to the hide and hopefully you know pigeons won't be seeing us
We're all set and ready for action. Farmer Pete tells us just how special today is. I always have a day's pigeon shooting with Jeff uh, after we drilled the peas, which I thoroughly enjoy. And it's the only day's pigeon shooting I do a year. So I'm here with him today. Um, well, I'm using a Browning um, Heritage Hunter 20 bore, which I've had for four years now. First over and under I've ever had. Um, and first 20 bore I've ever had. I was convinced by Jeff Garrett sitting here to go to an over and under after being, being told I was absolutely appalling with the 20, Churchill 25 inch barrel gun I was using. So I took his advice uh, and I bought one. A goldfinch, isn't it? There was encouraging signs, you know, one or two pigeons came in nicely. Um, you know, we killed a few, missed a few, as you do when you're trying to set the pattern up and get a few more pigeons in the pattern. Um, but they were coming in nicely. And as the day went on, I mean, it was slow. I will say it was slow to start with. But as the day went on, it sort of picked up. And then we'd have spells where we'd have a nice piece of shooting there for 10 minutes, quarter of an hour. Then it would go, it would slow up and the pigeons would, would go by us as if we weren't there. And then again, it would just pick up again. But there was no, a, not a distinct flight line. There was pigeons just coming and flying about in all directions, coming from all different ways, going in all different ways. Um, so, you know, although we felt that we was in the right place, um, it wasn't a, a strong line that you get on some days, just but the there was enough flying about and we got the pattern set up that eventually, you know, we was getting quite a bit of shooting coming in as the day went on. Slow and steady does it, as Jeff and Pete continue to add to the bag. Pete's especially keen to make the most of it. No one knows better than him how much damage woodies can do. We, we have problems with pigeons pretty much all year. I always say the hardest working piece of equipment on my farm is the gas gun. Yeah. It goes out in September and we bring it in sometime just before harvest in uh, July, August. I mean, they're out there all the time. So it is a constant battle with the pigeons. And, uh, you know, if we don't do a bit of control on them, their numbers would build up to, you know, beyond anything that we could then control. And actually, we use flags, we use bangers, but there's nothing better than a man coming out in the field and, and shooting for the day. So uh, I'm always grateful for people coming out and, uh, <clears throat> and getting at them and, and uh, shooting a food for us. Through the winter months, when it really gets cold and hard, I mean, the pigeons are hungry as well. And, and if they're not controlled, they will come in and they will take a, a, a crop which could be up to eight, nine inches tall with lots of leaf on it, down to absolutely nothing. So that's also great. The same with the peas. Um, fine, we just drilled them. There's lots of loose peas on top and the pigeons come in and they, you know, they, they get into a bit of a feeding frenzy on them and that's always a good opportunity to, to shoot some pigeons. But when the peas start coming up, as we call spearing, when they're just coming through the soil, uh, the pigeons will come along and just take that tip off. Well, that's actually it for that, that particular pea plant. So that's, that's a critical time for us. The next critical time really is later on when the peas have potted up, when they've got very small pods on, and, um, uh, and they will come and take the pods off and flatten the peas down as well. And again, all these things are reducing yield, so it's about controlling the pigeons to keep the yield up. Yeah, absolutely pouring in here, mate. How many cartridges you got left? Yeah, we had, we, I, well, I might have to come and get all your cartridges. <laughs> Don't swear, because we're on camera. I've just um, got another one, we had another one. Oh, right. it's, Pete wants to know if you've got any 20 balls, he's run out. No, he ain't. that one's banging. No, what you got, seriously? Um, we're probably a 
approaching 30. I, I, very, I tell you, we're, we're very similar to us, mate. We've just gone over 30, but it's just so slow, isn't it? There's lots of pigeons about, but I don't know where... Anyway, all right, mate, listen, we'll speak later. Yeah, see you later. Yeah, bye. Back to the shooting, and Pete soon picks off another bird. <laughs> well, there was plenty of lead went out there. <laughs> yeah. Well, normally, I mean, when, the, when there's two in the hide, um, if there's a single one coming in, you know, we take it in turns, on, which I think is the best it, way to do it. Come along, uh, if there was a group coming in, you know, later in the day, because I don't like shooting at groups early on in the day, but later in the day, when you feel that um, it's not going to hurt any, or I feel that it's not going to hurt anything, if there's a group coming in, you know, we get up and then Pete would take them on the left, and I'd take them on the right, and we'd try and kill, you know, one or two, two or three out of a pack. Um, sometimes it worked, and sometimes it didn't work. With twice the firepower, Pete and Jeff are able to make the most of every opportunity. But it's not been an easy day, with the wily woodies spooking easily and calling on all of Jeff's expertise to put them on the ground. Uh, but the other real noticeable thing that I noticed today was um, today you couldn't have many pigeons lying the wrong way. Um, if they were on their backs and their bellies were showing, too many of that, two or three of them, pigeons didn't want to cut. They'd come as if they were going to come in and then just at the last minute they'd just drift away. So I was having to come out every sort of three or four pigeons, five pigeons that were shot, I was having to come out, pick them up, set them up the right way, get back in the hide and then for the next sort of ten minutes, quarter of an hour or whatever, the pigeons would decoy in. But the moment we'd got pigeons upside down, facing the wrong way, it just tended to keep to, to, for them to shy away, which um, to me suggests that they, they probably had a you know, there's quite a lot of rape around here, so they probably had a fair whacking on the rape um, and were perhaps a little bit decoy shy if things weren't quite the right way. It was some of the classic sort of days pigeon shooting where you'd all of a sudden you'd just look up and you'd just see a, a grey chest coming at you uh, from great heights, just peeling in, getting right in front of the pattern and just opening up, landing in the pattern, which was real good. But like I say, you had to be on the ball today and had to make sure that the patterns were clear and cleaned up and in, the, in you know, the decoys in the right way. We've still got a couple of hours of shooting time left and the boys set about putting it to good use. Jeff's constant attention to the pattern means the birds are still coming in regularly. Come here, come in here, come in here. After a final few shots, it's time to call it a day. Before we pack up. Yeah, probably same here. We'll pack up the same time as you. Yeah, because oh, there's pigeons here, but they're, they're dropping on the bottom of the field. Well, the same as us. We're the bag room. Yeah, we're shells. I'll tell you what. Um... Oh, put me in that tunnel again. Well, we've actually, we've had a pick up um, and we've finished with 88, which uh, is quite pleasing really how the day's gone. And um, I mean, one of the, the things about today, which uh, has probably come to highlight more than anything is, it's been a glorious day weather-wise. Um, we're sitting in a hide, looking across an absolutely glorious view. Um, and to make it, the, the complete day, we've got pigeons coming into decoys. Um, so, all in all, 88's a good bag, but just to be out on a day like today, and with the, in the company of Pete, um, who's shooting his 20 ball today, uh, it's been a pleasure to watch him shoot well, um, and just be out in it, you know. These are what makes pigeon shooting, these days make pigeon shooting, you know, worth coming out for. Whether you get 10, dozen, 80, 100, whatever, but it's just been a fantastic day today. 
<laughs> it's a completely different discipline from game shooting. I mean, these are a truly wild bird, a, a pigeon. And as I've learnt once again today, standing in the hide with Jeff and yourself, it is it, it, you look at a flight line of a pigeon coming into the decoys, you get the gun up on it, and it's just turned itself inside out and gone off in a completely different direction. And you're stood there looking an absolute fool because all you've done is turfed up a bit of dust off of the soil, to be perfectly honest. It, it took me some time to, to, to get into the groove today. I did momentarily, and then it all fell apart. Yeah, but don't, <laughs> don't, don't put yourself down, mate. You killed some, some good birds. And I mean, the thing about pigeon shooting, which is what, what I've always enjoyed about pigeon shooting, is that, you know, like you say, they're a truly wild bird, and you very rarely get the same shot. Nah. You know, you're shooting at different birds, yeah. different angles, that did here on the yeah. ground here, they're going away there, they're coming over the top here, you know, all day, it's just different birds all the time. And, you know, that, that is the the wonders of pigeon shooting. Um, you know, you get you are after a very sporting bird, which, you know, for me, it's just it's why I've always hunted them all the time, all my life. Mm. Um, well, I've just been using me standard Brown and Max's three shot. Um, which somehow didn't realise until halfway through the day that I've managed to lose the sight. But I could, I've got another spare one at home, so I'll stick that in when I get home. Uh, Ely Pigeon Select cartridge, 30 gram six shot, which uh, again has done the job today. Killed some good birds and, uh, you know, can't moan about them at all. Been really nice cartridges. And, you know, like I say, with the with the camouflage that I've got on the deer hunt uh, and the hide we're getting, we've been in, it's been a complete unit. And I feel very pleased that I've been with Jeff again today, and I have one day a year with with Jeff Pigeon shooting, and I guess we've done that now for God knows how. I mean, I've been a long time, a long time, a long, long time, twenty plus so years or more. Yeah. Uh, exactly. And to watch his skill with the decoys and reading what the pigeons are doing, reading what's happening with the weather, the wind, on the field itself uh i mean it's it's something i can't do and i have one day out with him and i thoroughly enjoy it and i thank you very much yeah well listen it's your <laughs> yeah. landmark i thank you for letting me come up here Simple no, as that. it's a pleasure yeah, i imagine <laughs> but we can't leave without answering the important question who did better the old guard or the new it'll be on the shooting show <laughs> <laughs> no, i'd put it all on there to be honest yeah. well we just come back here and the news is good um, good, yeah, the A team got 89 and the B team got 79. So honour has been restored yes, indeed. and we've kept the young bucks at bay. Yes. For now. For now. <laughs> yeah. Right. Jeff there making decoying look easy. And now, the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News, a special report brought to you from the Northern Shooting Show in Harrogate. Making its first ever appearance on the show circuit, this event combined outdoor and indoor environments and was blessed with cracking weather for the duration. We headed to the Yorkshire Events Centre to find out what the great and the good of the shooting world made of it all. So Alex, yes. how's the Northern Shooting Show been for you? It's been fantastic, it's been a really good event. Um, it's very, very well organised, um, exceptionally busy for a brand new event, first time out, so we've been very, very pleased to be here. Okay, and interesting products, what, what's been the uh, product that we've all been talking about? Uh, well, there have been two products mainly, the um, Ewa Zenith on the game side, yeah. the new game cartridge, yeah. and the DTL Gold on the clay side. Okay. We've had a lot of interest in the DTL Gold cartridge. Excellent. So you'll definitely be here next year? Definitely, yeah. yeah. We've already sponsored HF and arranged that already. I hope it's older the sun. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's, been it's hot in here. It is, yeah. We're all, we've all been melting, but, you know, but it's been fantastic. It's been Brilliant. a really good day. A glowing report from the boys at Ely Hawk. And Scott Country were in good spirits too, with a brand new exhibition trailer getting a first public viewing. Brand new trailer, as you can see. We've gone away from the, the tent kind of thing and we've ended up with lots of nice cabinets inside and uh, 
with some nice lighting, some TV screens and, and everything else. So we can show everything that we've got on offer. For this show, we've, we've got some new uh, new bits and pieces. We've got a new Excite 2 that's just come out. Um, we've also got the brand new Seek Thermal Imager, which is a really small but effective thermal imager for, for only just over £400. Uh, and a whole new range of trail cameras and uh, fox coolers as well from Wild Game Innovations. Staying with optics, we got a look at the Swarovski Z8 scope, now just weeks away from hitting retailers. Uh, the key features with the Z8i are um, the new ballistic turret. Um, over the Z6i, it uh, can be detached or the customer can actually purchase the scope uh, without the turret and then add it at a later date. Um, it comes in four models. There are uh, two driven models, which is one to eight by 24 and a 1.7 to 13.3 by 42. Also, this one I have here is a 2 to 16 by 50. And also our flagship, which is a 2.3 to 18 by 56. If custom rifles are your thing, you won't want to miss the latest developments from Steve Kershaw Firearms. This is one of the new Apex um, actions built by John Carr of Doncaster. Um, a one-piece action, um, solid, made out of a solid billet. Um, fixed recoil lug, as you can see, internal threads, fixed recoil lug, flat bottom and straight side. Benefits of the bolt from um, a normal bolt is the easy in and out locking of the bolt, which is a burn it fit. New to what it has been conventionally made with um, conventional bolts, usually you have this section here threaded, but this one um, designed by John or easy bolt lift has the two um, integral locking lugs and it is just simply pushed together and locked together and it's locked in. It is as simple as that. The one piece bolt angle so there's no welding, no distorting of the bolt. Fantastic piece of kit. It comes to you in a custom configuration with a Seiko extractor, spiral fluting and of course the square integral lug. The one piece action comes with a Picatinny rail, as you can see there on the built up rifle. Um, this one's just waiting to be slotted um, straight off the press. At the Ruag stand, we saw the latest version of the popular Bagara B14 rifle. For those who don't know, Bagara are a Spanish company who are famous for making aftermarket barrels for other manufacturers. About a year ago, they brought out the B14, the B14 bolt action uh, rifle. It was in a floor plate model uh, only. This year they brought out the detachable box magazine version of the same rifle. And that's what's been creating all the interest at in this show. Available in the synthetic black stock, which is the most popular, or a wood version, exactly the same. Or if you wanted a, uh, something a little bit different, there's a green synthetic as well. Most calibers are available from us. There are a few more coming out later on in the year. Um, there will also be some more exciting things coming out, such as heavy barrel 308, perhaps guns in, uh, rifles in um, GRS stocks. Okay. But for now, this is new, this is what's going out to the dealer. From B14 to B15, the sumptuous new Browning gun was in situ at North Allerton Shooting and Country Wear. And you're going to tell me all about the Browning B15? Yeah, these are the new B15. They're built on the uh, 725 action. Yeah. Um, and then they're taken back to Belgium to be hand finished. Um, and then part laser engraved and then finish off hand, hand engraving. Um, it's a fantastic build too. It's a beautiful, beautiful game scene. I think it's as good as you're going to get. Yeah. Um, and then they've, they've also put this uh, solid rib on this. I mean, to be quite honest with you, we, we shoot the, uh, we've had the uh, 725 grade fives, which is a, basically the next best, best option. Yeah. And these just take the, the 725 to another level. Yeah. The most outstanding, handling, balanced gun. At, this, at the present moment, they're only doing them in, um, in 12 gauge. Um, next year, they're going to do them in 20s, and then they're going to do pairs. Um, and it's the price point, so it brings it in under the B25 uh, level. So you're sort of buying um, a B grade gun here for about 9,800, and then they go up to about 15,000 for the E grades, which has uh, the metal scratching gun here in the stock. Phil Ogden is a game first stalwart and he was in good spirits here with a new Rosak to show us. We've uh, listened to the stalkers out there and some of the concerns they had with the 
pocket set up we had on the original one, which both row sets do have. Yeah. And the fact is, they put all the gear in there, and you can guarantee that the last piece of kit they need is always at the bottom. You have to pull everything out. Yeah. So we've come up with a front pocketed system that organises your kit for you. Yeah. You look inside, you've got a waterproof zip entry across the top. You've got an access pocket there just to store extra stuff in. But inside, in the main compartment of the bike, we have a setup where there's little dividers inside that actually organise so your rubber gloves, yeah. throw a key kit, and go down the back. Gamble pouches sit where you want them to sit. You can have a left and a right setup where you know one item's on one side and your clean kit's on the other side so you're not contaminating anything. And then at the back, you have a little access pocket again just to keep your personal stuff out the way, your license and stuff like that. And then a little simple little clip, keys on there. I'm sure you're not losing your keys. And like I said, once it all seals back up, you've got the extra protection of having a, a waterproof setup. So this addition onto our existing bag, it hasn't altered the price. The price is the same, 100 pound. Piece of kit that's been around for like nine years now. And finally, we caught up with Basque to see their latest initiative to attract female shooters. It's a new initiative from Basque, and it's basically we're making a hub at, through the best website for all the UK's lady shooting events. So we're working with um, the Shopping and Chelsea Gun Club. We've got all our regional offices involved. Yeah. And we just want to make it the one place where you can go and find the ladies only shooting in your area. Yeah, I find it very interesting. You've got Duncan Thomas there as your pinup. Yes. <laughs> yes. This only we, we just started um, Easter. Yeah. So we're still branding. We've got our branding on our counter, but these are still done. <laughs> oh, smashing that. I think it's a great initiative and uh, yeah. good luck for that. And if we can ever support you, that would be fantastic. Thank and, you. Uh, That's all from the Northern Shooting Show. We'll see you at the next big field sports event, the UK Game Fair at Stoneleigh on the 22nd to the 24th of July. That was the Shooting Show News. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And it's only 11 weeks to go to the UK Game Fair. Buy your tickets here. This has been The Shooting Show. <laughs>